We just covered best practices and optimal settings in regards to shutter speed and aperture for HDR photography, so we're done. I'm just kidding. We need to talk about ISO. ISO is our next consideration. Let's talk about best practices for ISO, and this one is really, really simple. You're always going to keep your ISO, or at least whenever possible, at the lowest native ISO on your camera. Now, for Canon users, when you're shooting still photographs, the lowest native ISO is 100. For a Nikon user, your lowest native ISO is going to be probably 160. Okay, so we always keep it at the lowest possible native ISO for several reasons. Number one, and the reason that probably most of you know, is that raising the ISO is going to introduce noise, grain, and it's going to kill your detail in your image. But did you know that raising the ISO actually also reduces dynamic range? That's right, folks. At an ISO, let's say at an ISO 100 on my Canon 5D Mark III, I might be capturing 12 or maybe a little bit more than 12 stops of dynamic range. As soon as I boost to ISO 200, now I'm capturing maybe somewhere around 11.5, 11.7, not a significant reduction going one stop. When I go up to ISO 400, it's going to drop significantly. Now I'm capturing maybe 10 stops of dynamic range. At ISO 800, now I'm down to eight stops of dynamic range. At 1600, I'm down to six stops of dynamic range. These are just examples. I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, that's beyond the point. Just know that when you're increasing the ISO, you are also reducing dynamic range. And given that we're shooting high dynamic range photography and photographs, well, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? <laughs> so keep your ISO at the lowest possible native ISO setting, and you're gonna maximize detail, you're gonna maximize color and overall dynamic range. Next, why do we say native ISO? Well, because your camera actually has native ISO settings that basically is uh, our multiples of each other. So if we're on Canon, a native ISO setting is 100, and then 200, 400, 800, 1600. Anything in between, like say, let's say ISO 160 or ISO 230 or whatever, uh, ISO 250 actually. All these in between settings are digitally enhanced settings, meaning that it's taking, say, ISO 200 and digitally boosting the overall brightness to create ISO 250. What this does is it yields more grain than if you shot it at ISO 400 and actually pulled it down in post-production. It overall reduces the image detail, it reduces everything, dynamic range, when you're shooting at these in-between values versus just going up to the next native ISO setting. And that's right, you heard me correct, shooting at ISO 250 is worse on a Canon camera than shooting at ISO 400. Okay, shooting at ISO 160 on a Canon camera is worse than shooting at ISO 200. So if you have to increase the ISO, always increase ISO, ISO, whatever. <laughs> always increase to the next native ISO setting. Again, for Nikon users, this is 160, 320, 640, and so forth, okay? So just remember, native ISO, lowest possible ISO, and really, your ISO setting should be the last setting that you're changing when you're adjusting your exposure. And when you absolutely need to, you can boost it a little bit. I would say that, you know, for best results, 100 ISO, your lowest possible is always the best. 200 or the next step up is gonna yield pretty similar results. 400 is essentially the peak of yielding professional uh, HDR photographs at that range. Because why? At 400 ISO, we're having to do a significant amount of noise reduction before we process these images. Remember that when you're shooting an HDR image, when you're doing a bracketed sequence, you're taking three images and you're layering them all on top of each other. What does that mean? That means that if you shot at 400 ISO, it's not gonna look like 400 ISO when you layer them because you're layering three times 400 ISO. It might look like 1600, 3200, or even 6400 ISO in that final HDR image. It's gonna be basically unusable without going in first reducing noise before we process it. At ISO 800, ISO 1600, forget HDR, forget the bracketed sequence because it's not gonna turn out anything near something that you want to hang on your wall. And isn't that the whole point? We wanna hang this stuff on our walls, guys. Okay, so hopefully we drilled home to stay at the lowest possible native ISO with bracketed sequences. The one other thing I wanna talk about is when you are shooting a single shot HDR, you have even less leeway than when you're doing a bracketed sequence. With single shot HDRs, the best result you're gonna get is from 100 ISO because why? We need to capture the entire tonal range within one single image.
at 100 ISO on a Canon or 160 ISO on a Nikon or ASA or whatever you Nikon people say, then uh, you're capturing the maximum dynamic range possible within that one single photograph. And that's the point of a single shot HDR. As soon as you go up to 200, you're going to have much less room to work with and 400 will be impossible with a single shot HDR to basically pull back all the tonal range because you're losing too much to begin with. All right. So with single shot HDRs, it's absolutely crucial to shoot at the lowest possible native ISO, which is 100 on Canon and 160 on Nikon. If you're on a different camera, just look up in your manual or check out online what your lowest possible native ISO setting is. More likely than not, it's probably ISO 100 or ISO 200 or 160, just depending on the make and model. All right, guys. So hopefully this helps you out in understanding optimal ISO settings and what's usable and what isn't when it comes to HDR photography.